All right, here we are, Kim Tech Tonic. Uh, I've got a 5250 watt power back electric generator. 6500 surge watts, premium brushless alternator. Anyway, what we're getting at here is that uh, I was fighting with this fighting with this generator. Now I'm not going to take you through step by step how I did it, but I basically put an electric start on this on this thing that was super hard to pull over. It yanked my goddamn shoulder out of the socket sometimes. So I, I, I was trying to figure out a way to fix that. So I ordered a kit. I ordered a kit. Came with the starter, which this unit has four mounting brackets for this particular starter, and I got it on Amazon. I believe it was a kit. Came with a solenoid, and it also came with a push button starter, which I drilled a hole and installed it here, which is a two wire starter. And all I did was run one wire basically to the uh, solenoid, and then the in and out is to the starter and, and to the battery, and also this one goes to the switch and out of the switch to the battery to give you power. Now I'm using a car battery to do this and I just ground it to the frame. You got to make sure you have a ground. I scraped the paint away so you ground your battery to the ground. Same thing when it came to this. Here this has to be grounded because this is just positive coming in which generates it and it gets its ground here through the frame which in turn when you push the button it engages the solenoid to send this to this and then it turns over the starter now as far as charging I don't know if it's going to charge the battery I doubt it will but it has charging magnets now my biggest problem was when I started this project it came with came with a flywheel like this which was not doing me no good at all if you saw my prior video which you probably didn't because I only got six viewers so you might not have seen it so anyhow there's no splines on this there's no splines on this to engage with the uh course the starter has a, a gear on it when you power it, it kicks out most people know that and then it spins and starts and uh, so that wasn't gonna work and you if you watch my prior video I call the factory stuff oh we don't make that flywheel no more well come to find out there's three different flywheels and I don't know I might put out a video telling you all the different numbers but there's like three different uh, flywheels that fit this thing and the only way I could find one was on eBay. Of course it was used. It was used parts place. It's the Tecumseh. HM100. Uh, as you can see. Uh, I don't know. Not sure where it says it. But it's the Tecumseh 8100. Right down here. You look. Get a good look. It's quite common. model. But yeah, they told me they didn't make nothing for that no more. And this is an older generator, too. But, it, you know, how often do people use generators? So, anyhow. So, I went through all that crap. And I installed it all. Pulled the flywheel. And I actually uh, bought a new carburetor for it, too. Because I was having problems with the carburetor. Yeah, I did get it on... Uh, Amazon or something and it's probably made in China. It wasn't quite it, it, it worked It was a, a little bit different. I mean you see this And you look at this one there was the only thing different was that this uh, Set screw here 
which you see here, the one where I got my thumb, there's, you can screw it. You can screw it. Christ, you can screw it in and out. There's a little thread on it. This one, I, I don't think you can adjust it. I don't know, but I took this one, I took this one all apart, cleaned it, shit. Excuse my language, but and it still, it still wouldn't stay running or unless I pumped gas into it. So I assumed it was the carburetor. I replaced that carburetor, and this is a makeshift battery that I had sitting around, but. I'm not sure if it would work with a smaller battery, but I put a car battery in there that's not in that good a shape. I might have a cell or two missing. A uh, uh, couple things I might have left out here was when it comes to when it comes to this front plate, you see how it has this balls there which was supposed to fit the starter I left this part out of course it had this thing here that went in there which was probably with that screw hole that, that held that in there but to, to, to also I mean even though I shoved that starter in there and then it, they had this stupid bracket in here which I had to cut off that went from here down to here and it wouldn't allow me to put this face back on because of this bracket. Now, I don't know why they would do that. It's probably to confuse the person that don't know a whole lot. But I just cut it off the grinder and then this face come, bolted right back on. Which it already bolts on with one and two on the bottom and one two in the top it's only like oh no there was four screws pulls right off same as this thing pulls right off with four screws and you unloot in your big thing and if you have a wheel puller that works or you can put some pressure on it tonk it and the wheel come off pretty easy now i don't know about everybody else's but it works pretty easy but that's uh that's the finished product and I'm happy, because now all I gotta do, instead of yanking my shoulder out of the socket, is. Including. Holy fuck. Oh my god, what the hell? Oh! You got to remember to put the switch on on. All I know is I'll be laid up for a day with my shoulder being yanked out trying to get that out of it. Especially when you see when I try to start it, even the battery sounds like it's like, of course, it's not a probably not a A1 battery, but hey, saves my shoulder blade. So, hope you guys like this video. Maybe you can retrofit yours or do something. Tim Tech Tonic. Like and subscribe. Give me some thumbs up, man. Uh, I got some more stuff coming, so. Like and subscribe, man. Whatever. Christmas Town Hill always <laughs> <laughs> going out the door. So.